Okay, part two of our geoprocessing discussion, getting into some extraction tools. Um, yeah, having thought about it, I guess it makes sense that the clip feature is more of an extraction. It's just too bad because it's so similar to an erase. It's silly that they're in different places. But um, like I said, the clip is a cookie cutter. So you are extracting information instead of getting rid of information. Um, but input features, clip feature, like a cookie cutter, gets rid of all the dough outside the cookie cutter. Um, um, the only attributes that are exported are from your input feature. The clip uh, attributes are completely ignored. That's important um, because intersect is going to do the same thing as a clip, but you do get to maintain your attributes. So it's a way of um, keeping your data under control, keeping it clean, but also um, if you're thinking about clipping, but you're like, wait, I don't get it. I still need to know what's going on here. Then think intersect which is also an extraction tool, so, ugh. All right, so clipping. Here's a stream polyline data set for the entire state of Utah. Uh, here's the outline of Cache County, and if we zoom in on that, zoom, uh, you can see that Cache County has a bunch of divisions in it. This is actually um, census data, so it's all divided up into census blocks. But if we use this as a clip feature, all those internal edges are ignored, as are the hundreds of uh, attributes that are associated with the census data. And the clip output is just going to be the stream polylines within Cache County. The only thing in the attribute table here would be the stream identifying attributes. So in ArcGIS, uh, this is ArcGIS Pro. Again, I don't remember what a clip does. Click on the question mark and you get a picture, which usually helps. Input features, these are the attributes that you wanna maintain. The clip feature is the cookie cutter. And if you can't remember that, here's your picture. Um, it's easier to understand these and remember them and learn them if you just clip a whole bunch of stuff and look at the outputs and be like, oh, that's the opposite of what I wanted to do. Uh, the XY tolerance, um, this is what I was getting at with scale. This is one of the ways that you can start to control those slivers is to set an XY tolerance. Um, for everything that I do, um, I don't work with data where I've ever had to set an XY tolerance. So this is something that I um, haven't used, but um, you might find yourself in a situation where you need to explore that a little bit. Okay, dissolving. Um, you know, if you run your buffer and you forget to dissolve, you can either rerun your buffer and click to dissolve your outputs or just run the dissolve tool on it. It aggregates features that have, uh, that share an attribute. So it's a way of simplifying your output. Um, yeah, but you do need to have um, an attribute that's that you're using as a common field. The problem with that, um, something that you need to think about is it's going to simplify your attribute table. So let's say you've got a bunch of counties and you do want to dissolve them on, I don't know, um, what their most dominant agricultural output is or something. You know, maybe these are mostly corn and these are mostly soy and you want to just dissolve these into one big area for some reason you're gonna lose all of the information about what the county name is. Um, uh, maybe, maybe you've got attribute fields that say what percent cover agriculture each one of these counties is. So you know it's 70% corn, 20% soy, um, you know, 10% wheat or something like that. Um, you're gonna lose all that information and it's all gonna be consolidated down into one row. So here you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 25 rows in your attribute table that represent all these different counties. After dissolve, you're gonna have one record, one row in your attribute table that represents all of these. So you need to be careful and think about that. Um, dissolve might not be the best way to handle it. Um, if you don't need the attributes, it's, if it's just for a visualization scheme, that's fine. Um, but you need to think about how you're gonna summarize. Um, maybe you're doing the dissolve in order to summarize. So maybe you want to know what um, the average uh, percent land cover, <laughs> uh, corn agriculture uh, crop cover is for these counties. Uh, I hate it when I couple the bad, bad examples and I can't uh, make them mean something. Anyway, so your statistics field, uh, this is the field that it's going to be summarized, the dissolve is going to happen on, and then you can, the cool thing is you can decide how you want 
um, all of these values to be summarized. So maybe you want to add them up, maybe you want to average them, maybe you want to know what the min or the max is, etc. So a lot of different summary statistics that you can use, which is kind of neat. Okay, uh, that's it. That's all I want to talk about for extraction tools. Um, but I want to go over some really helpful things to know about um, tools and tool help. You can get a lot of information. So an arc map, if you don't know how a tool works, open tool help. Uh, it um, walks you through how the tool works in general. And then if you click on any given field, this is going to update to describe exactly um, how you would set up each one of these inputs. Um, same thing goes for um, like RGIS Pro. I've been showing you guys the little question mark. That's the same thing. Each input has its own little question mark, so you can get um, really specific information on how tools run. Uh, the results window. This is so important. It's really helpful to know your results. Everything that you do in your ArcMap project, um, the results window keeps track of all of the history of all the commands that you've run and tools that you've run and all the settings for your tools. So in this current session, and then um, if you save your project, you'll have a history of your past sessions, work sessions. It'll show you that you ran the clip tool and that you named the output dummy.shp, um, that your inputs were um, uh, the shear zones and points, that you didn't set an XY tolerance. Um, yeah, that you ran zonal statistics. You can expand all these things and see exactly what happened. What time did you run it? So maybe you've just been in a, you know, a, a geoprocessing blitz and um, you ran something and ran something and ran something and you kept kind of tweaking your inputs and, and you forgot to keep track and all of a sudden you got it, it to work. Ah, I got the results I wanted. Oh no, I can't remember what I input. But I know it was at, at 12.15 because my mom had just called. You know, you can track down exactly what you did in the results window. Okay, um, to open it, in ArcMap, you go to the Geoprocessing tab, Results. In Arc Pro, it's in your Catalog tab over on the right-hand side, and then you go to the History panel, and it brings up your, your history. Um, layer to KML, if you click on any one of these, these indicate that the tool ran successfully. These indicate that there was some kind of issue. So if you click on them, it opens up and shows you the same details that you could see in Arc Map Desktop. Um, tells you exactly what you named your output, what your inputs were, how you set um, all the different settings, when it ran. Um, the problem child here, you click on it, it tells you it failed, runs you through how you set up all the inputs, but then it gives you the um, reasons for the failure and it gives you an error. Input feature class is not registered as versioned. I don't know what that means, but guess what? This is a hyperlink, so if you click on it, it brings you to um, the documentation page for that error. Unfortunately, this is a new error for ArcGIS Pro, so they don't have a lot of detail here. Um, but oftentimes when you click on those hyperlinks, um, you'll get a bunch of text and you kind of go, oh, I get it, maybe I'll try this. This one's not very helpful. Um, the other error that you get all the time is the 999999, something unexpected happened. <laughs> This this will haunt you, and I should buy you all T-shirts that say nine 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 nine, 9 so we can all have a good laugh about it. Uh, the most common error, uh, the most common thing that results in this is some kind of file name error or path error. So sometimes you'll get a nine 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 because somewhere in your output path, and I'm talking about this, your output file, there's a space or there's a folder that starts with a number. Um, it doesn't always cause problems, but with raster tools in particular, no spaces and no files um, or folders that start with numbers, no special characters. That's the most common reason that you'd end up with a 999-999. Okay, and then uh, environment settings. This doesn't happen very often. In ArcGIS Pro though, um, when you want to change the output coordinate system, you have to go into the environment settings. So the parameters are the regular tool settings, the environment settings, um, temporarily change um, settings for the tool. 
I don't have a lot to say about that right now. There are a couple, a couple of tools that we're going to run this semester where you're going to need to go into the environments and set the output coordinate system. But generally speaking, uh, you don't need to deal with that. Okay, in ArcMap Desktop, you get some real-time feedback. Um, if there's a red X here, it means the tool's not going to run because you have a problem that you have to fix. Usually it's um, something like your raster file name. Um, well, this, this might mean that um, this data set doesn't exist at this location anymore, like you moved it. Um, if it's for an output file, it means that you have more, th more than 13 characters in your raster name, or you've got a space or something like that. Um, the green means you have to put something in here, it's not optional. Uh, the exclamation point usually means this isn't going to run quite right or a heads up. Um, in ArcGIS Pro, when you get this, it means you've already run this and given the output this file name. If you run it again, you're going to overwrite your last, uh, your last run. You should give it a new name. Um, if there's nothing there, it means it's an optional parameter, and I put optional in air quotes because you should still look at it and pay very close attention to it. You can just leave it blank. Um, and then... Yeah, if you click on the red X, like you don't know why you have this, if you click on it, ARC's really handy and that it'll tell you exactly why. It'll probably give you a link to a hyper or a hyperlink to an external source where you can get more information. Okay, and then finally, where to learn more about geoprocessing because you don't like the blitz nature of my uh, slides. Google ArcGIS Pro geoprocessing and you will find yourself with a rabbit hole <laughs> like no other. All right, any questions, let me know.